Since 1996, the United States of America has been trying to build its first high-speed rail network, and to this day, it still does not have any. Believe us, we were shocked too when we heard that the glorious, rich, and almighty USA does not have a single bullet train. Meanwhile, China built more than 40,000 kilometers of high-speed train tracks in less than 20 years, has numerous bullet trains, and its tracks are designed to accommodate trains with speeds higher than 350 kilometers per hour. But do not worry, the USA is heading to have an operational one by 2030, or maybe a little later. We just do not know because so far the only high-speed rail under construction in America is the California High Speed Rail, CHSR, which is about $70 billion over budget and is constantly stalled due to all sorts of nonsense, such as vetoes, lack of funding, political rhetoric, and you name it. But now that the China card has been thrown in the politicians and federal government's faces, they are speeding up the process and racing to have it operational by 2030. Let's now take a detailed look at the California High Speed Rail, America's largest transport project from A to Z, and answer some important questions such as, will they ever finish it? California High Speed Rail, CHSR, is a publicly funded high speed rail system currently being developed in California. 85% of the project is funded by California and the remaining 15% by the federal government. The idea has been hovering since 1996 when the California legislature and Governor Pete Wilson established the California High Speed Rail Authority with the task of creating a plan for the system. Fast forward to 2008, voters approved the plan which specified a route connecting all the major population centers of the state, authorized the issuance of bonds to raise funds, and established other requirements. The reason California is building CHSR is obvious. It is the most populous U.S. state and the third largest in terms of size. It is also the largest economy out of all U.S. states with a GDP of $3.7 trillion and a GDP per capita of about $90,000. The CHSR system is currently being implemented in phased segments. Construction began in 2015 for the first of these segments in the San Joaquin Valley portion of California's Central Valley. It will run from Merced to Bakersfield and is planned to begin operations in 2030. Additionally, the commuter rail systems in the major metropolitan areas of San Francisco Bay Area and Greater Los Angeles are being upgraded for improved safety and service and to support a blended system in the future, with CHSR sharing upgraded tracks, power systems, train control systems, and stations. CHSR trains will travel at an average speed of 350 kilometers per hour in the dedicated high-speed rail segments and about 180 kilometers in the blended segments. Once the full phase one system opens, the non-stop trains between San Francisco and Los Angeles which are about 560 kilometers apart, must not exceed two hours and 40 minutes of travel time as per government requirements. Even though the project has been stalled quite a bit and the estimated cost nearly tripled since 2008, there is some good news. Just a few days ago, the CHSR Authorities Board approved the release of a request for qualifications, which clears the way for the authority to obtain and screen vendors as well as establish a pool of possible manufacturers for the project's train sets. We do owe you a proper and truthful explanation as to why this project was delayed so much and may still face quite a few hurdles that can lead to more delays, budget overruns, and even possible scale back. The truth is, it is a money issue. Forget all the other nonsense about environmental excuses, engineering obstacles, and other lame excuses, because if the USA wants to build something, it can get it done fast and right, no matter how big and complex. For example, merely six years after President JFK announced that the US was heading to the moon, the country did not just land a spaceship on the moon, but also the first human being. Even the Transcontinental Railroad was built in seven years and during the U.S. Civil War. So in a nutshell, the only reason CHSR is taking forever to build has more to do with money than anything else. California hoped, and still hopes, that the federal government will fund at least half of the project, 
which is an issue that just might lead to more problems in the future. Other hurdles were political. Many politicians argued that money is better spent on other projects and social programs, since California does suffer from immense inequality issues. However, this issue was resolved after the majority of political leaders finally understood that this project would create tens of thousands of long and short-term jobs directly and in the related supply chain since it is a Make in America project. In addition to the obvious economic benefits, CHSR provides environmental benefits such as reducing pollution and carbon emissions, improving passenger travel and reducing vehicular traffic and air travel congestion. It is by all means a great project and will finally put the USA on the map as a developer, builder, and operator of bullet trains and related infrastructure. Let's now take a look at the route, stations, and natural obstacles. The core of the project is not to connect every single village and town along the line, but to connect California's major metropolitan areas together and link to their local commuter systems. It will be built in two major phases. Phase 1 connects San Francisco and the Bay Area through the San Joaquin Valley to Anaheim in the greater Los Angeles area, a distance of about 800 kilometers. Phase 2 extends the north end of the Central Valley section up to Sacramento and extends the Los Angeles section in the south through the Inland Empire down to San Diego at the southern edge of the state for a total system length of about 1,300 kilometers. The route going through the mountains at the north and south of the Central Valley posed a significant challenge that has been resolved via the construction of tunnels, including three tunnels that each will be longer than 10 miles, making them longer than any existing train tunnels in North America. The biggest actual obstacle was the Great Bakersfield Palmdale Dilemma that required overcoming the Tehachapi Mountains. The current route through the Tehachapi Mountains is not fit for passenger trains, but it does include the famed Tehachapi Loop for freight trains. The current route between Bakersfield and Palmdale is too full with BNSF and Union Pacific freight trains to add passenger trains. And it's incredibly curvy. At one point, it doubles back on itself. A passenger train on this route would take more than three hours versus one and a half hours for driving. This problem is being solved by tunneling through the mountains, which slashes the trip time to about 25 minutes on a high-speed train. This leads us to wonder, how will this high-speed rail change travel time for Californians? Well, you can expect to get from San Francisco to San Jose in 30 minutes, from San Jose to Los Angeles in 2 hours and 10 minutes, from San Francisco to Los Angeles Union Station in 2 hours and 40 minutes, and from Sacramento to Los Angeles in 2 hours and 20 minutes. Mind you that these are minimum estimates and travel time could be up to 15% shorter, all depending on the bullet train speed in shared segments. Trains have not been selected yet. However, the specifications set for competing train builders by the CHSR authority are as follows. Each train set must be able to sustain a continuous speed of 350 km per hour, have a lifespan of 30 years minimum, no longer than 210 meters in length, feature control cabs at both ends of each train set, and have the ability to go equally well in either direction, a seating capacity of 450 seats, have food service similar to airplane style serving, allow for the use of cell phones, broadband wireless internet access, and onboard entertainment services, and have earthquake safety systems for safe stopping and exiting. Experts currently predict that around 40 million riders will use the CHSR annually, and it will have a very positive impact on the economy and social connectivity. Are you American? Maybe you live in California. What do you think of the impressive project? Let us know in the comments section and please like, share, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. Thank you.